Hi everyone, um, my name is Victor and I'll be presenting on behalf of my team, Claire, Yvonne, Nobu and Evelyn um, on street sweeps. Uh, so through our research, we found that street sweeps challenged the rights to dignity, ownership and property of unhoused people. So what are street sweeps? Street sweeps are about getting rid of visible homelessness in the streets. Uh, and that's through the seizure and destruction of people's personal property, uh, particularly belonging to those who are unhoused uh, and who must store their personal belongings in public spaces. So in Vancouver's downtown east side, city workers and the VPD work together to perform sweeps, sometimes multiple times a day. And this is done by going down streets block by block with disposal trucks to clear the streets of people's belongings. Uh, sometimes with only a few minutes notice. Uh, people have reported having essential things like IDs, sleeping bags, tents, mobility devices, and other highly personal mentos uh, taken away due to street sweeps. So why do cities use street sweeps and how are street sweeps justified? Uh, we've identified two main reasons, attractiveness and cleanliness. Uh, the first reason is the attractiveness of the cities. We found that processes of gentrification, capitalism, and the over-financialization of housing uh, to all be major drivers in perpetuating street sweeping. Because of the downtown east side's proximity to the downtown core, uh, the government, investors, business owners, and residents, and other members of the growth machine uh, advocate for street sweeping and the removal of homeless people uh, because they feel that unhoused people negatively affect uh, the attractiveness and livability of the city. For example, the opening of a condominium development on Hastings was linked to increased street sweeping in the area. Another reason is cleanliness. Uh, because um, these homeless encampments oftentimes have pests, trash, human waste, uh, needles, and the like, uh, these sweeps are often uh, justified as a response to uh, a public health crisis. Um, however, it is really important to recognize how services like adequate public bathrooms or proper waste disposal are often underdelivered in areas like the downtown east side to begin with. And so what are some of the consequences of street sweeps? Street sweeps are not very regulated. The rules and regulations around street sweeps, if they exist, are largely set by each city and are oftentimes vague. So as a result, street sweeps can happen with very little notice in poor weather, very early in the day. And this can place people, unhoused people, uh, in situations of vulnerability and precarity if they need to suddenly gather other belongings uh, and find other shelter. With street, street sweeps, people have their ownership and dignity challenged uh, through having their things raided and discarded. Personal possessions are not garbage. They are a way of building life and home and identity. For those who are unhoused, personal property becomes even more important and necessary for one's survival. And when these things need to be replaced, this takes up time and resources that could otherwise be used uh, for other activities like finding housing, looking for jobs, taking care of each other, um, or even socializing. Possessions can also become commodities uh, for some unhoused people because street vending can be a main source of income. Street vendors sell their goods on the streets and street sweeps interfere um, with this activity um, and interfere with people's livelihoods and people's personal and economic agency as a result. Property relations involve vulnerability and privilege and the street sweeps that happen in the downtown east side reflect the vulnerability that is created for those who are unhoused. So what are some solutions to street sweeps? The solution to street sweeps would really just to be ending street sweeps all together. And this would have to occur at a policy level um, within the city of Vancouver or at other levels of government. Um, there's already been a lot of push to ending street sweeps um, by organizations and residents. For example, organizations like the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, Vendu, um, and Pivot Legal Society have used media outlets and other news conferences to bring awareness about street sweeps 
uh, and to really push for the ending of these sweeps. In the meantime, finding intermediary solutions can also help with mitigating the impacts and the harm that people face from this practice. Uh, so we've identified three potential solutions to reduce the impacts of street sweeps, but these are not an alternative to ending street sweeps altogether. The first potential solution could be better carts for those who are unhoused. So for example, the UBC carts project um, seeks to redesign the traditional grocery cart uh, into something that's safer and more durable so that unhoused people can safely and securely store their belongings. The second could be storage facilities. Many cities are st starting to fund storage facilities for unhoused people uh, where they can access lockers or bins uh, to safely secure their things. And the third could be community integration, and this can build off of street vending. So creating and supporting a more permanent market, split, market space will allow people to participate in the informal economy um, and the legitimization of street vending can empower people, restore dignity, and better integrate unhoused people into the community. So in conclusion, street sweeps challenge the rights to dignity, ownership, and property of unhoused people. And respecting people's rights to personal property brings empowerment and encourages community support. After the presentation, we also have a research poster with some more information uh, on our research, and we would be happy to talk to you if you have any questions. And you can also scan the QR code on the slide uh, to access our full paper. Thank you so much.